an IITG person promises only what he can deliver and an IITG person delivers what he promises. Hydraulics particularly emphasize on the water. Of course, it does not mean that only we are talking about water, other liquids are also dealt in hydraulics. Then what is the aim of hydraulic engineering? That hydraulic engineering aims at, if we go systematically and in a step by step way, then we can say that understanding the physical processes of fluid flow analytically and empirically. Now, what we mean by analytically and empirically? First, we need to understand what is the physical processes and for understanding the physical processes involved in hydraulics, one must have the very basic background of physics. Say, for example, if we consider a stream say flowing like this, a stream is like this, it has some water and say the stream has this background, well I mean bed and water is flowing like this. Then what force is basically making the water to flow in this direction, water is flowing in this direction? Well, the force means the weight of the fluid is there and because of the weight of the fluid, fluid there is a component of this particular weight in the direction of the flow. So, the force that is guiding the flow or that is driving the flow in this direction is the component of the gravitational weight of the fluid in the direction of the flow. And then, when something is moving, there will always be resistance offering to the movement. That is the bed of the stream, then side that is the bank of the stream from all this side there will be resistance force that we can show like this. So, these are some resistance force acting from the opposite direction. Now, when we talk about how we will understand analytically a flow, we can say that when the things are moving in equilibrium, then the force acting in the direction of flow and the force resisting the flow are in balanced position. So, that way this is a very simple and very preliminary concept I am just trying to explain what we mean by analytical understanding of the physical processes. Then of course, some of the things may be very very complex and we may not be in a position to explain each and every physical processes involved in the whole phenomenon. right? Now, for that situation, Sometimes it happens that we need to take recourse to some observation. We need to understand the process empirically. Maybe we have to take recourse to the lab, laboratory experiment or we may have to take recourse to some of the practical field observation. Say, if I talk about a water again flowing, let us the water is flowing here and suppose it is a river and we are putting a say pile, say wooden pile we are putting here for some purpose. Then the flowing water when it will be passing through or passing around this pile, there will be different type of flow formation here which will cause the bed and if this bed is suppose alluvial bed, sandy bed, then it may cause the bed to erode out and ultimately after some times you may find 
the bid is becoming like this, what we call as scoring. Now, that process of scoring, how much will be the scoring depth? All these depends on various factors, like what is the size of the sediment, then what was the flow velocity, then what is the depth of flow, say so depth of flow is this much. If the depth of flow is higher, then again this factor will be different. If the sediment type is different, that, that is the bed material by which the channel is being formed is different, then again our entire process is changing. If the water is flowing with a high velocity, if it is in a steep slope, whether it is in a flat slope, all these influences this particular processes. And that is why in this sort of things, although we understand the phenomenon to some extent, it may be difficult for us to getting a full understanding of the entire process. And then we need to know what is going on so that we do through some experimental observation or by some field observation. We can have several field experience with us and we can see that at this depth how much is the scouring, at this velocity how much is the square scouring for this type of soil how much is the scouring and those things we can just simulate in the laboratory also physical laboratory and through those physical modeling we can understand what the process is. So, that way we should first understand the physical processes of the fluid flow. That is why physical processes we need to understand analytically as well as empirically. Now, once we have understood the physical process, the next step will be to express these physical process mathematically. Well, when we talk about mathematical expression of the physical process, say now here if I say that we consider one strip of the, I mean one segment of the stream and say this water, this portion of water having some weight w and then if this channel has angle theta, then this component that is which is acting in the direction of flow will be say w sin theta that is weight multiplied by the sin theta, the sin component of the weight. And then resistance force again we can derive by some means. Right now I do not want to go into detail of that. And then when we will be equating these two, then we will be getting a governing equation which define that when the flow is moving in equilibrium, then we can equate these two and that will lead to some governing equation. So, that way this is a simple situation. Now, for complex and complex flow, we can express the physical process set mathematically. Then we get some governing equation and this governing equation define our flow phenomenon. We can then solve various problems that are related to hydraulics, we can apply mathematics and we can have better understanding of the processes. Well, now why we are doing all these things? That is, we are trying to understand what the physical process is. Well, we are trying to understand what the mathematics of that physical process. Basic intention is that our objective is to do something for the benefit of the mankind. Definitely, we are all working for that. Now, so next step is utilizing this understanding for the design of various water related structures and not only structures, water related structures and devices and say different water system like say pipe network system or different sort of system it can be. Saying so, to go more detail into what sort of application we can have in hydraulic engineering that you can see that when we talk about design of hydraulic structure, what sort of design we are talking about. Well, so when we say about utilizing this knowledge of hydraulics in different aspects, let us consider first that we are utilizing our knowledge for constructing various hydraulic structures. Now, by hydraulic structure, what we mean that it can be dam. So, all of you know about dam, that is not a problem, all you have seen the utility of dam. Then it can be where berries, different sort of things, 
like where we do not store water and uh, rather we uh, just keep a ponding, ponding on the upstream of the weir and then we release it and then in berries the gate section is little higher like that different type of water, uh, hydraulic structure we construct and then embankment as you can see here this is one river embankment that we construct for preventing the flood water to move into the village area like that then we can have other sort of river training work like spars well many a time people suffer due to flood and erosion and when suppose the water is going very near to the river bank and causing lot of erosion and that is leading to devastation then we try to put some structure we try to put some hydraulic structure one may be a spar by which we try to just force the water or try to deviate the direction of the water away from the river bank so that it can be protected from the uh, this bank can be protected from erosion then sometimes suppose the channel is very near to the bank then we try to put some other structures like that here i am showing uh, one porcupine screen like that some other bamboo screen can be there lead fencing we call that so that sort of screen we try to put by which we try to promote sedimentation and try to soak the channel so that we, all these things we try now how this will perform how this will perform really that we need to understand so we need to understand the physical processes we need to understand the physical processes means we need to understand the hydraulics of that then sometimes we need to model it so knowledge of hydraulics is very very essential for all those aspect then we talk about offshore structures similar in the sea i mean what i am talking like river in sea also we have different type of structures and now people are constructing even airport in seas then small structures are always there and that uh, on the seashore so that sort of structure we need to construct and there also knowledge of hydraulics is very, very important and breeze when you were constructing breeze particularly the substructure of breeze when you talk about that the hydraulic phenomenon as i was just explaining that scouring how much will be the scouring in the breeze if you construct a breeze with a pier that is supporting the breeze and if the spear fails the entire breeze fails and so we need to understand the hydraulics that is going in the river on which we are constructing a breeze so that way in all those different structures these are not of course the only structures there can be lot other hydraulic structure i'm just giving you some example that in all those hydraulic structures we need to know that basic principles or knowledge of hydraulics and that is very important then let us see another devices that we talk about the design of water distribution system what we mean by design of water distribution system now in irrigation we can have irrigation canal then similarly sometimes from a area we need to drain out the water in city also we need to drain out the water that is the storm water that is coming so we need drainage canal so it can be drainage canal for that say in a city there will be a network of drainage canal and in city water supply when we talk about we need to supply the water to the various part of the area of the city maybe through pipe then all those city water supply it will lead to a distribution system and that we use sometimes pipe network now when we are using a pipe network that pipe may be coming from a reservoir which is at a higher elevation now this pipe will be carrying water to certain distance now whether it will be uh, i mean there will be some loss in there okay i will be coming to that point later but uh, in all this different aspect of designing water distribution system we need the knowledge of hydraulics and this is another example that i am showing here you can see that uh, it is being used for say irrigation purpose there is a pipe from which the water is the spreading into the area where some uh, say agriculture is going on and that sort of how, how much distance we want to spread it depending on all those aspects uh, we need to design this particular system and there also we need to know the knowledge of hydraulics well then when we talk about say design of hydraulic machine 
that is also very very important. Now design of hydraulic machine that again can include say pumps, turbine, then hydraulic press like that here you can see uh, one turbine, one turbine and turbine is very familiar is known to almost all of us now and this is how to design a turbine. Now sometimes in some cases we may have more water in our hand but the water that is falling from what height to the turbine may be less. In some case we may have less amount of water but that less amount of water is falling from a very high height. So that way uh, this depending on those things we need to design different type of turbine. We need to design different type of turbine. Well and what type of turbine will be best suit for what situation to know that we need to understand the very basics of hydraulics. Similarly, the pumps. Sometimes we need pumps to lift the water to a very high elevation. Sometimes we need pumps to lift the water not to a high elevation, but we need a large amount of water to be lifted. Now, depending on the steam, all those uh, different need, the pump required for us will be different. And that is why to decide and to design a required farm for our required objective, we need to know the very basic fundamentals of hydraulics. And apart from this very well known equipment like this turbine and pump, we have some other hydraulic machines like hydraulic press. So, uh, well, right now I do not want to go into detail of this aspect, but what I want to emphasize that for design of different hydraulic machine, we need to know the very basics of hydraulics. Well, then again design of navigation system, for that purpose also we need to know the hydraulics fundamental. Now see, uh, there are different need can be there in the design of navigation system. For example, sometimes uh, we can have a river which is having a steep slope in a particular region. Like that this river is flowing from here and it has a steep slope here. This is the Mississippi River. And then uh, our ship need to travel from this side to that side. Now how it will just travel? Through this slope it cannot climb down. So what we need to do? We need to put some devices that we call as a canal lock that we call it a canal lock. That means by putting the canal lock what we can do we can close the first there will be a gate on the gate on this side and on the other side also there will be a gate. So this gate we can close first and we can allow the water to flow here and because this gate is closed so the water level in this part will be rising and at some time the water level here will be becoming in the level of this particular higher side and then the ship can enter through the gate here which is open. Now once it is open here you can open the gate and then this water will gradually air of, of course before opening the gate you need to have some devices through which you will allow the water to move out from this canal to some other direction and then this water level has come down you open the gate then you are in the lower side or the lower elevation which is equal to the elevation here on the lower side of the stream that is the downstream side of the stream and then you can move safely from this your ship can move safely from this uh, lower elevation to meet the downstream part of the stream. So that way in designing this sort of canal log we need to know the very basics of hydraulics. Well sometimes again we find that in river uh, braided channel I mean where a lot of sensors are there depth is not uniform in that sort of river like Brahmaputra that we get that uh, your depth required for a big ship to move you may not get in all part of the river. Sometimes we are finding that well the depth required here is not sufficient so we divert the water from other part of the channel to that side that also we take some action like putting some uh, bundling and that way we divert the water, we promote the scouring at that point and that way we try to create a waterway for the sea. So 
for doing all those activities we need to know the basics of hydraulics well then another aspect that we have not talked about till now this is the design of well right now what we are talking about all on the surface of the water I mean surface of the earth we are talking about the water existing on the surface of the earth but water remain there in the under the earth surface also as groundwater and for many of our work we need to have this groundwater we go for pumping the water out to the surface for our different uses and that's why we need to design some well we need to know that we are suppose we need a particular amount of water in a particular time then we need to know that if this is the well size then we can get that amount of water now at what depth we can get all those things we need to know and say well system is required for drawing groundwater for various purposes such as if we say such as say domestic use including drinking irrigation and agricultural area we need to uh, we need water for that purpose also and sometimes we need water uh, we need to draw water rather for other purposes like when in an area your groundwater is at a very high level that is very near to the earth surface then also there may be problem that crops are not growing because the crop to grow it needs air as well as water if all the entire area is full of water then all sort of crop cannot grow there and in those situation we need to pump out the water for making this area free from water that is the solving the water logging problem dewatering that we call so for all these different activities the knowledge of groundwater hydraulics is very very important well then <coughs> Uh, now we talk about hydraulics for water quality till now we are talking about various aspect of hydraulics in the quantitative way but the quality of water is also very very important and in managing the quality of water in understanding the quality of the water the use of hydraulics is very very essential say for analyzing pollutant transport we need to know hydraulics how suppose well I would like to give you an example from the surface water say a city is there and just on the side of the city one river is there and lot of pollution that is coming out from the city we are releasing to a particular point into the river now that pollutant will be traveling with the water to the downstream of that particular river fine now when it is traveling downstream gradually this pollutant will be mixing up with the water and concentration of the pollution will gradually decrease downstream now you just assume that at the downstream maybe say one kilometer downstream or two kilometer downstream from that particular point you have another intake structure from which you are taking water for the for utilizing for different domestic use of course you may have a treatment plan to which you are carrying the water from that downstream point and then you might be distributing but that intake water or input water what you are giving to the treatment plant is also important and we need to know that whether the water we are collecting will be of the proper quality or whether it is pollution free or how much pollutant is there what is the pollutant pollution uh, pollutant there what is the concentration of pollutant there and those you need to know that is when we know that concentration of pollution at a upstream point how it will disperse and what will be the concentration at a downstream point we need to know then we need to know the hydraulics of water how it will mix up if uh, how it will mix up with water and how gradually this concentration will come down so that is one issue then again when some other environmental concerns okay we are talking about these things then when we talk about uh, that uh, suppose water treatment plan there also we use different devices for treating the water we put some chemical for mixing the uh, mixing that with water and we try to just uh, remove the pollutant from that uh, water now for all those processes also 
knowledge of hydraulics become essential. And of course, we are talking about say you are releasing water or you are polluting a particular point in a water to minimize that, to minimize that sort of pollution, we go for wastewater treatment. That wastewater that is coming from a city, we try to uh, treat it and then we try to release it. Apart from other knowledge of environmental engineering, the knowledge of hydraulics is also important. The very, very basic fundamental knowledge of hydraulics is also essential in designing all these different component of this sort of treatment plan, wastewater treatment plan, water treatment plan and all these sort of other uh, activities. Well, then we can have uh, nowadays say uh, computational hydraulics is becoming a very, very important topic and advanced topic through which we can do lot of work. So, with the development in the computer capability in terms of speed and memory space. Now, we have very big computer, big computer means size is small, but we are having lot of memory space there. Then uh, the speed of the computer is very fast. So, that sort of advantages we are having and also parallelly the numerical techniques and the graphical interface all these things are improving and all this improvement has encouraged the engineers and scientists for using the knowledge of hydraulics well that computational hydraulics so by computational hydraulics what we mean that it is now gaining popularity day by day that because the computer capability is increasing by computer capability what we mean that it is increasing in terms of its speed and memory space that is available and then the different numerical techniques are also improving and the graphical interface is also increasing so now we can have different models and by utilizing our advanced computer and advanced computing technique, various problems of hydraulics can be solved once you know the, once you know the very basic uh, knowledge of the hydraulics. Of course, we need to work on that and uh, just I want to emphasize this particular aspect by one example that is say this is a problem what I am showing that in a river, in a river say there is a hillock on the side of the river and when the water flows then what is ha what, what happens that it is moving like this when the hillock is there on the side it is a plan view so when a hillock is just getting extended into the river when water will be flowing it will be moving like that sorry uh, it will be moving like that and it is coming like that so this sort of circulating current we may get and that may cause rather that causes erosion in the bank it depends on of course soil quality and all these things but if soil quality uh, is susceptible to erosion then it causes erosion and then we need to provide solution to that so when we have the basic knowledge of hydraulics what we can do we can go for model study of that and then we can understand that we can provide spars like this that we are placing here then when we place the spars how the velocity is changing you can see that these different colors are showing different velocity and then by modeling it we can see that how the velocity is changing in different area then here the arrow are showing that how the flow is moving that I was telling about and then uh, this way we can solve various problems of hydraulics engineering this is just one example that way computational hydraulics is coming in a very big way and very basic knowledge of hydraulics is essential another topic the hydroinformatics Well, in hydroinformatics also, this is becoming now very, very popular with the development of say geographical information system uh, and with the uh, development in remote sensing technique and at the same time with the development of uh, some other uh, devices like global positioning system say uh, going to a particular place you know what is your location in terms of latitude and longitude. So, when all these things are coming up, now you can utilize all these things to develop say a digital elevation model of a particular area combining all these things and then once you develop the digital elevation model, this is an area for
for the Gohati city and uh, this is the river Brahmaputra like that and so once you have this digital elevation model then from that if you have the basic knowledge of hydraulics you can utilize that and you can find out you know, there is a way that we can develop a flow accumulation grid which will lead to the stream network uh, that we can have the stream network of that area uh, by applying uh, some uh, capability of GIS you can apply there and of course uh, in this in developing those things very basic knowledge of hydraulics is required. So, as such what we have seen that knowledge of hydraulics is required for various purposes and once we have this knowledge we can utilize this knowledge for benefit of the mankind through different uses. Of course, these are not limited to these uses only what I have said here, but it is I mean it can be applied to many other field, it can be applied to many other field. Of course, as you have seen the scope of hydraulic engineering as such is very vast, it is very vast and the course, this particular course hydraulics what we will be taking up, it may not be possible or definitely it will not be possible to go into detail of all these different topics. And so, what we will be studying in this particular course that let us discuss before going into the actual courses. The topic that will be discussed in this particular course are thus in broadly we can divide it into this type that is one is the open channel flow, then canal design, pipe flow, then we can talk about hydraulic models study. Well, and then this open channel flow, what we mean by open channel flow? Well, a definition of open channel flow can be given in this way that open channel flow can be defined as the flow where the liquid flows through any channel with a free surface subjected to atmospheric pressure. Well, that is very important that the surface of the water is subjected to atmospheric pressure. Well, a definition of open channel flow can be given in the way that open channel flow can be defined as the flow where liquid flows through any channel with a free surface subjected to atmospheric pressure. Well, the subjected to atmospheric pressure is very, very important. So, if I draw a channel like this, say again this is the bed of the channel and see this is the water surface. Now, this surface must be subjected to atmospheric pressure that is this should be free to the atmosphere and that is why it is also called free surface flow and that is the very basic definition of open channel flow. Well, and what is the difference between open channel flow and when we talk about a flow through pipe that things will be coming later, but right at this moment we need to know that what we mean by open channel flow. Well, now then that looks very simple that open channel flow we are talking about a channel where the free surface is subjected to atmospheric pressure. Now, what type of channel we are talking about? Are we talking about a channel of this sort which is very small and which is not having any lining on the side, water is flowing fine are we talking about a channel of this small size which is suppose shape may be little v shaped or we are talking about a channel of this sort. Vast difference between these two channel say when we talk about this channel or when we talk about this channel it is quite wide channel and that other one is very narrow here we do not know what is the actual bed shape it may be u shaped or it may be of some other shape are we talking about I mean these two sort of channel are we ready to discuss the open channel concept for these two different type of channel 
or are we talking about a channel of this kind? It's a drainage canal or channel I would like to say where you can see that there is a lining, there is a lining, we have a concrete lining or masonry lining. Are you talking about this sort of channel or are you talking about a channel of this sort where you can see the flow, there is lot of turbulence and you can see the flow is moving here below the road level. This is the road on the side and the water is moving below these things. Now the term when we talk that open channel flow, here of course the surface is not open. There is the road moving and the flow is moving through this part. Now whether this will be a open channel, can we refer this also an open channel? Well, are we talking about a channel which is calm and quiet and moving in almost level ground like this? Or are we talking about channels which are moving in steep slopes with lot of turbulence in it? If we have a close view of that, are we talking about a channel of this kind where you can see so much of turbulence is there when it will come, it is coming down, it is coming down with a lot of energy. If it gets something here in front, it will erode it out. Are we talking about this sort of channel? Well, then there are some other criteria. Are we talking about this sort of channel which is located just in the midst of a township where as I told that there can be all pollution things coming here or there can be breeze like this sort of structures can be there on the streams or we are talking about a channel again the side is suppose lining is there which influence the frictional characteristic as I was talking about the frictional characteristic of the channel that is the resistance that will offer that will be offered by the bed and the side that will be here that is the concrete lining we have whether we are talking about a channel of this kind or we are talking about a channel which is there in a very remote area like that say all vegetations are there and the frictional characteristic will be totally different between this and the channel what I have shown there right now. So whether we are talking about this sort of channel or of course much more interesting channel can be there. Are you talking about a channel which is braided in nature? Say the channel is coming then one part may be moving this way, another part may be moving this way, there may be sensor in between and uh, then uh, this year it is like that in a lean period that means uh, suppose when the flow is less it is like that when the high flow is coming again everything may be full of water and during that process it may erode this sandbar and there may not be any sand sandbar existing in the next year. Suppose this sandbar is vanishing and then another sandbar is coming up somewhere here stream pattern is changing. So are you talking about that sort of complex situation? Well or are we talking about a channel which is in a deep course, which is in a deep course like that one where of course it is very steep, the bed material is different and it is flowing in a zigzag way. Of course, it may not erode the hills, but in a plane, if it moves in a zigzag way, it can erode the side. Are we talking about this sort of channel or we are talking about a channel which is flowing through a completely different setup that is all the side or the bed is made up of say boulders. So when a channel is moving through a situation when uh, through a, say, a, a natural setup where you have vegetation, where you have greenery that will behave in a different way than the channel moving through such a boulder bed. So are you talking about this sort of channel? Well, then this is a quite interesting picture. Are you talking about a channel of this side? which is being eroded originally this were in the level ground and then this has been eroded by the flowing water and we are having a channel in a very zigzag way and it is moving some part in this way some part other way and then it is flowing. We want to know suppose how much flow will be there how this will be influencing how, whether it will be eroding the rock more so uh, those complexity will all be here. So this is a channel from the Charapunji area. Now are we talking about a channel of, well this is a sea water of course, uh, then what I want to show that uh, some channel may be having that sort of turbulence also, well then are we talking about a channel of this kind, that is you can see the color of the channel water, this water 
the color itself indicate that this is containing lot of sediment in it. Now the flow behavior of the channel when it is carrying lot of sediment will be totally different from the flow behavior of a channel which is not carrying that sort of uh, say sediment in it. So, we are definitely talking about this sort of channel or the channels what I have shown earlier or we are talking about a channel which is clean enough where we can I mean which is carrying water clean enough without any sediment rather which is sediment means in the bed we have sediment but the water is so, so clean that we can see the green vegetation that is growing in the bed we can see the different uh, boulders small pebbles that is there on the bed of the channel so are we talking about all these different types of channel yes definitely when we are talking about open channel flow we need to deal with all these different kind of channels well uh, as we are requiring to deal with all these different kind of channels yes uh, we are talking about all these different kind of channel or we need to handle all these different kind of channels as such what we could get from this uh, pictures from these pictures that there can be channel of different types and there can be again flow of different type not only channel there are different type of channels definitely and in those channels depending on the steepness of the channel depending on the wideness of the channel the flow that is moving through the channel and again depending on the amount of the church that is coming into the channel the flow pattern will be different so as such in open channel flow we talk about different type of channels first and then we talk about different type of flow and then we talk about understanding the physical processes of these different kind of flow then we talk about that uh, how we can uh, mathematically deal with different kind of flows that are existing in nature. So, all these we will be discussing in the topic that is open channel flow. Well, uh, our check second topic again of course, one point I have not mentioned here that is an open channel flow I have shown you in picture that is you are seeing in one instant of time that we are finding that is at a particular instant of time the flow is like this. Now, there may be situation when the flow is moving like that just at this moment the flow depth in the channel is suppose we are getting x1 then after some time we are getting the flow depth to be different. Say if I take example if I take one example say one dam is there there may be another situation that is the flow is not remaining uh, flow parameters like depth or discharge are not remaining constant with respect to time this is changing. So, you take one example it may not be very natural, but suppose you have a dam here you are constructing a dam we are constructing a dam here and we are trying to store the water here. Now, suddenly we have seen that due to some reason maybe uh, reason we I do not want to discuss the various reason here, but anyway due to some reason the dam has failed and on this side you have dry channel or maybe very low uh, level of water flowing in the main stream. Now, what will happen if this dam is removed then what will happen this water will be flowing like this. Say at time t 1 it is here then after some time it will be here after some times it will be here like that at time t 2 it is here at time t 3 it is there. Now, when we are observing this sort of flow and our interest may be to know that how this flow is moving and say at what time the flow will be reaching this particular point because there will be villages and all those different things here different setup. So, our interest may be to know these things then here with time the flow depth or the entire flow is changing that sort of complexities also we need to handle in open channel flow that will be coming under unsteady flow analysis. Well, 
without going much detail into that, uh, we can go to the next topic that will be of our interest and that we will be discussing in this particular uh, courses that is suppose canal design. As you have seen that natural channels are definitely of different type and that man made channels or canal that we call can also be of different type and we need to design the canal to serve our purpose. So, here we talk about canal design, here you talk about canal design. So, canal can be earthen canal that is unlined and hence unlined means there is no lining, we do not have a concrete lining or masonry lining and hence it is susceptible to erosion or we can have a lined canal that is it is lined with concrete or masonry or maybe some other sort of lining in some interior area lining is given by bamboo also. Well, so that way different sort of lining can be there and hence the channel is say non erodible erosion is not a problem for that. Again we can have channel as I have already shown that it may carry clear water or it may carry sediment laden water. Then the location of the channel it may flow through alluvial formation alluvial formation means say a river is in uh, flowing over suppose sandy formation and or it may flow through a rocky bed. So, if it is flowing through a alluvial formation then scouring another problem will be more important here when it is flowing through a rocky bed that sort of problem may not be very much of important right. Now, so this sort of different canal we need to design that means when we are designing the canal uh, we need to know that over which area and for what purpose we are uh, just designing that canal. Then depending on these different need our design criteria will also be different. That is most of the cases suppose if we are having a line canal where the erosion is not a problem we can go for most economic channel. Basically when we try the engineering practices we try to do it in the optimal way. So, we try for minimum cost and then suppose for carrying a particular discharge for carrying a particular amount of discharge well we may have a channel uh, of a size well uh, let me take the pain here just to draw well uh, say when we are interested in a size of the channel when we are uh, designing a channel say when we talk about carrying a amount of discharge an amount of discharge through a channel suppose this size is sufficient that is to carry a required discharge so this size is sufficient means this will be flowing safely through this and you have some uh, free spaces over that area so that if somehow some more discharge come or some due to some wave action wave action there will not be over flooding or like that then uh, this is sufficient ok. But the same uh, uh, to carry the same amount of discharge Q one may say that no I will not go for this one I will be going for a channel of this kind which is wide and which is uh, depth will be less but it will be wide. Now which one you will be selecting because it depends on if you select this one your cost of lining may be more in one cost of lining may be less in one. So that way our objective will be to design the channel considering all those aspect to have say minimum cost or we call this as most economic section or a efficient section which will carry the water efficiently. Well, <coughs> this can be one concept of design. Then another is that suppose it is a channel which is located on a unlined area or you are designing an unlined canal. Then in that unlined canal if you design your channel for a particular shape it may happen that water is flowing ok it is sufficient. But the velocity is much high in the channel and it is causing erosion of the channel or it may be other way also that is suppose the water that is flowing through the channel is carrying some sediment with it from the upstream somewhere and your size is such that velocity is not sufficient to carry the sediment along with the flow. So, sediments are getting deposited into the canal. So, this will not uh, this will make your channel if the uh, sediment get deposited into the canal 
or the water erode the canal, then your purpose is not served for which you designed that canal. So, in that case, most economic section may not be the best section. And in that case, you need to design a channel or canal such that there will not be sediment deposition if the water is carrying sediment or there will not be scouring of the channel. So, for different objective, our design criteria will be different. And again, different theories are being developed that how to design a canal as uh, a chan canal which will not cause covering nor it will cause silting. Okay. So, all these we will be discussing in this canal design. Well, then uh, if we go back again, uh, that is what the canal design aspect. So, different theory that are available that we will be discussing and we will be doing some uh, practical example, some problem of canal design in these courses. Then we talk about pipe flow. Well, that is one topic which is <coughs> of importance for various purposes. So, liquid flowing through the pipe under pressure losses its energy. First, before going to that part, if we say that why water flow from one point to another point. It flows because it has high energy or high head on the upstream point and low head or low energy in the downstream point. Well, head means uh, energy per unit weight of the fluid. Okay. That way it is flowing. Now, when it is flowing from one point to another point, then the water flowing through the pipe always flow under pressure. It is not like that in open channel the flow is always subjected to rather the surface is always subjected to atmospheric pressure, but in pipe flow there will not be any free surface. The water will be under pressure and that is why when there is a puncture you can see the pipe is there and when there are some suppose holes or say nozzle fitted into it the water is just going out like this it is forced it is forced out like this because the pressure outside which is atmospheric is less than the pressure inside the pipe. So, pressure inside the pipe is higher. So, it is moving out from this as a spray. Well, now we need to know all these different hydraulics for analyzing the pipe flow and suppose to what distance we want to carry this water all those things will be coming up. So, but the point is that water when it is flowing through the pipe will lose its energy. So, pressure will also gradually drop as you know that energy is the combination of pressure velocity and all. So, when the pressure is getting dropped suppose the press pipe is very long and during the process. So, how it loses energy if we talk about that how it loses energy basically it loses energy in overcoming frictional resistance of the pipe this is one and then it loses and it loses energy in passing through the bands and contraction etc. So, there may be band in the pipe, there may be some contracted portion, there may be some joints. So, when the flow is moving through all this different obstruction, then it need to do some work and as it is doing some work, the energy is getting uh, I mean energy get dissipated in the point and because of that uh, our problem is that this is the very basic reason that water is when flowing through the pipe is losing its energy and we need to carry water from source to delivery point through pipe network in different you know, uh, for different purposes. So, water requirement at different outlet points are also different. Say in a city we have different outlet point that is the different area where we need to uh, supply the water that water amount of water required is different and again we need to provide the water at a required pressure because suppose if you talk about a household there may be a storage tank on the top of the house. Now, when there is a storage tank on the top of the house the supplied water must go to the top of the house and for that it need to be it need to have some amount of pressure minimum pressure. So, to provide sufficient water at 
each point with required pressure, we need to design the best network with optimal diameter of the pipes. For deciding, for designing all these things, uh, what, what we basically design, we design that what should be the actual network, shape of the network and then what should be the different size of the pipes. Well, other than that also much more complex situations are there. In simply, in, uh, in simple just I am explaining that all these different forms of pipe flow we will be discussing in our topic of pipe flow. Then of course, we will be going for model study. Well, that is the hydraulic structure or machines are generally designed on the basis of available theoretical knowledge on the subject. However, say this available theoretical knowledge when we talk about it may not be always possible to have a complete understanding of all the physical processes. And because of that, when we design some important structure, well we rely on our theory, but still we need to have a verification of why what we understand. We need to go for model study because as I did explain at the very beginning that some of the phenomenon are so complex that uh, representing that uh, simply by our know-how may not be possible. In that case, we go for physical model and sometimes not only for that purpose. Suppose we have complete understanding of the processes, but still at a particular location if we are taking a particular action, suppose a river if you, if you talk about if we are constructing a breeze, then it will be having some uh, uh, say influence on the downstream also. Now, to do that, well to know that effect that what, how, what will be its effect on the downstream, we need to carry out model study and then we see it beforehand what is going on. So, that way uh, that for designing important hydraulic structures or machines like turbine or um, uh, other machines, it become necessary to carry out model study. And this model can be physical or mathematical. That is, we can go for laboratory model or we can go for a physical model that we can uh, or, or mathematical model. Mathematically also we can design a model and we can carry out experiment on that. So, these are the broad topic that will be that we will be discussing in this particular course of hydraulics. Well, as I did explain at the very beginning, the course is very vast and it is not possible, I mean no, I am not talking about this course, the subject is quite vast and it may not be possible to cover all the different aspects of hydraulics in detail. But what is our objective that we need to learn the very basic in a much more clear way so that the foundation once built can help us in going into different advanced topic of hydraulics. So, with that concept in our mind, let us move ahead. We should start our journey, let us start our journey to the course of hydraulics and we hope in this particular course, we will be able to clear some of the important issue of hydraulics and it will help us in going ahead to the higher and higher topic to the advanced and advanced topic of hydraulics. Thank you very much.